Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is on creating a repeating pattern from a photograph or a scan or even perhaps an image that you found online. This particular example is going to be using a space dye type of pattern. This would also translate really well into a heather or melange texture that you wanted to create. So. I first have got this JPEG of a space dye yarn that I want to create. I'm going to use the image trace feature as well as the pattern tool within Illustrator CC to demonstrate this. If you're working in CS5 or earlier, the image trace is called live trace and works a little bit differently but ultimately is quite similar. Um, and the pattern tool is unfortunately not available until CS6. So. That's where your restrictions lie, but otherwise you should be able to do everything if you're in CS6 or CC. So with my JPEG selected, I want to choose image trace from my control panel at the top. If that doesn't come up, you can choose object, image trace, make. It's going to default to a black and white, which is not ultimately what I want. That's fine. I want to open my image trace panel. I can do that either from the control panel here or choose window, image trace. I'm not going to go into too much of detail here. A lot of these settings are the same as they were in the live trace option in CS5 and earlier, but there's a couple new things that I do want to touch on. The first thing that I typically do is I turn my preview off while I go through and I manipulate some of the settings that I know I want to adjust. The reason for this is because each time I make a change, it's going to re-render the artwork and it takes a little bit of time to process. So this saves some time as I can just go through and change a couple things at once and then turn my preview back on. The first thing is I know I don't want my mode to be black and white, I want it to be color. And in this particular design, I've already played around with it and I know I want four colors. If you weren't sure, you could manipulate the colors with the preview turned on. From there I will turn my preview on and I will allow it to process. I will note a couple of things while this is thinking is that within image trace you will get the best results if you're working with a higher resolution image, typically 300 dpi or higher is best, and if you've brought your artwork in with minimal wrinkles or waves or creases in it. So try and bring in the cleanest artwork you can to get the best result in the long run. I've now got my trace and it looks pretty good. I think I'm actually just going to leave it just like that. There is one setting that I want to show you guys and I'm going to go ahead and make a copy of this right now so I can show you how these two different settings work. The first is the abutting method. So within the image trace panel here we've got the option for abutting paths. Now what's that that's going to do once we expand our artwork is all the edges are going to butt up perfectly against each other. The other option which I'm going to apply to this bottom trace here is the overlapping paths. This is new and allows for the paths to be overlapping a little bit. I prefer the overlapping path option uh, most of the time just because it gives a little bit more flexibility when you ultimately want to move individual shapes around within your trace. So from here I'm going to select both of my traces and I need to expand them in order to get in there and manipulate the artwork and create a repeating pattern. So I can choose expand from my control panel at the top or I can choose object, image trace, just one at a time. Object, image trace, expand. And again, the one on the bottom, object, image trace, expand. So remember, the one on the top we created with abutting paths. So as I select all of the artwork in here, you'll notice all the paths butt up perfectly against each other. So if I move this even one little pixel, I've now got a gap in between my artwork. The other option was to create overlapping paths. Now you can see when I select this, my paths overlap each other by a little bit. So this provides a little bit more flexibility when I want to come in here and move something a little bit. I don't get all these blank white spaces right around it from moving something one little pixel. So I'm going to work with the bottom overlapping path option. And I'm going to just choose object, pattern, make. 
From here, my Pattern Options dialog box opens up and I've got the ability to manipulate the artwork with a live repeat showing for me. So the first thing I see is that the pattern edges are a little bit sharp and hard. You can very clearly see where the repeat was made and I don't visually like how that looks. Um, the other thing I wanna change immediately is I wanna put this into a brick also known as a half drop repeat. So I'm gonna choose that and I just think it provides a little bit more of a natural flow um, within a texture pattern like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start coming around to the edges and filling in where I think these shapes end very abruptly on the edges. So I'm going to choose shapes that look like they could finish those sharp edges and with my direct selection tool, I choose this shape. I then am going to hold the Option or Alt key to make a pattern, make a, um, excuse me, make a copy of that shape as I drag it. So I've now filled that in and kind of created that edge to look a little bit more natural. So I'm just gonna kind of keep going through and doing a couple of those. And this pattern's pretty easy to do just because it is such kind of a messy, sort of chunky, sloppy looking pattern to begin with. Um, it provides us with the ability to be a little bit sloppy as we come in and seam up these edges that are looking a little bit sharp and make them look a little bit more natural. So if you're working with something that's a little bit um, more perfect artwork. It might take you a little bit more time to do this, but um, just be patient and, you know, you build it once and, and then you've got a great piece of artwork that you can use over and over again. And let me just reflect this one. Okay, now it's not totally perfect. I'm not gonna tweak over it too much right now, but it's looking pretty good for a natural repeat. So I just choose done, and I can move this over to the side. I can ultimately delete it. It always lives in my pattern within the swatches panel. So I have my swatch panel open. Here's the new pattern that I just made, and I can create any shape on my artboard and fill that with my pattern. If I decide later that I wanna edit something, I just come over to my swatches panel and I double click on the pattern. It brings me back into the pattern editing mode where I can then come through and manipulate individual pieces within the artwork if I see something that I don't think looks as good as I ultimately wanted it to look. Again, I can just choose done or I can also save a copy to create another copy of the pattern. I'm just gonna leave it done It'll update the, any instances of the pattern on my artboard and I am all set to go to use my space dye texture within all of my designs. Thanks for watching, this is So Heidi.